All right, here's what we're working on today. This is a 2006 Prius. Um, it has the typical combination meter quit working issue. Um, there's a lot of videos on this, so I'm really not going to focus on the uh, disassembly and assembly. Um, I already checked. There are some really good videos on YouTube of that. Um, what I didn't find much of was the actual repair of the combination meter. I know a lot of people have bought them on eBay. Um, there's repairs out there for them. Um, I'm going to be repairing this one. Um, I, I don't uh, see the point in replacing it. And it also, if you replace it, it's got the wrong mileage on it. If you're in a state like I am, California, um, mileage uh, recording on here is actually pretty important for insurance purposes and uh, uh, for emissions. Um, so in, anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and uh, disassemble this. Uh, pretty much the overview is you work your way across from from the driver's side you got to take pretty much everything off you got to take the vents out you got to take the display out uh the uh glove boxes um you have to take the side panels off like i said there's a lot of videos already on this so i'm not gonna i'm really not gonna cover that um but what i am gonna do is show you the right way to fix this the one video that i did see um they paralleled an electric lit capacitor in there and they um they also were checking capacitance in circuit. You, you can't do that with a regular multimeter. Um, it'll give you very, very false readings. Um, so we'll show you the right way to do this. Um, I'll probably pull it out. A friend of mine's got a capacitor wizard. It's an in-circuit capacitor tester. Um, he's not too far from me, so I'll probably take it down to him, and we'll uh, take a look and see what the capacitors look like. Movie magic. That's what we're all about here in Hollywood. Um, believe it or not, all this only took me about 25 minutes. Um, like I said, there's a good uh, several videos on YouTube on how to remove this. That's not really the subject here. It's the repair of the actual meter. Um, I didn't run across anything um, that uh, was off from any of the videos, except uh, this vent doesn't need to be removed, and these do have a tendency to crack. Um, so don't remove this one because you don't need to. Um, uh, this is something I don't understand. This connector and these connectors here... Um, for the combination meter, for whatever reason, I don't know why they did this, the, the side that clamps into the dash, you know, the little plastic tabs, those things are on the side that you need to take out of the car. Uh, why wouldn't you put the, this connector on the other end? That way this stayed stationary. I don't know why it's that way, and the airbag connector is that way. I don't know. That's a flaw. That shouldn't be that way. But other than that, uh, nothing really tricky at all kind of came apart really easy. These are not too hard to get to. These hold the side uh, curtain uh, trim on. So let's take a look at the combo meter now. So here's the combo meter. Um, it does kind of work like a heads up display to a certain extent. Uh, it's got a mirror in here. So the actual meter, the digital display is not here where you would think it would be. It's actually right here. So we're gonna flip this over and we'll pull this apart. This is what I'm talking about, by the way. These connectors are the ones that come off with the unit, and they're the ones that are snapped into the dash. That's just stupid. Um, this is where the combo meter lives, right in here. I already unplugged this. Pull these screws out right here. And uh, this comes off. We're going to disconnect the connectors. If you're familiar with electronics at all, these have those little clips that you have to kind of pull out. All right, so I pulled this screw, this one, one here, and one here, and just kind of got this loose. Just connectors are still on there. Um, there's screws all the way around the back of the this white plastic that covers up the combo meter. Um, here, 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 and here. And then this thing just kind of snaps off. Oh, and there's this little side cover here too. There's one screw that holds that. All these little tiny screws are all the same size. It's kind of nice. Um, so then you just take these things, and I'm doing this one-handed as usual. And you pop these guys out. Could have gotten a tripod, but my laziness on a Sunday shows. And then you don't have to be too careful. These things are pretty robust. They're more robust than they look. Um, but yeah, you just pull these guys out. Pull that up out of the way. And that's that. All right, it's out. Um, there was one more little connector I didn't notice. It's on the side right here. But you just pull it out. There's no clip or anything that holds that. This is the combination meter. All of these are capacitors right here. These are capacitors. These are 
radial electrolytic capacitors. This is a surface mount electrolytic. That's what these are right here. That's what this is right here. Supposedly, what I'm seeing or what I've read is that this is the one that goes bad. But we're going to go through and we're actually going to diagnose it and see which ones are bad. I do see a little bit of corrosion on here. That could be electrolyte that's leaking. Um, probably not where that is, though. Those, these film capacitors right here, these don't go bad. Um, very rare. Very rare to see those go bad, but the electrolytics for sure do. So I think what I'm going to do, based on the number of caps that are on here, um, because these are good Nichicon caps, these electrolytics are probably still good, but these surface mount, especially the early surface mount stuff, these tend to leak. Um, so I'm probably going to take this over to a friend of mine's, and we'll use the capacitor wizard on it. All right, so we're going to check this with the capacitor wizard. And what this device does is it uses a high frequency current. And as you can see, the ESR is a little bit high on that one. Let's compare it to one that's good. So that's pretty good and that one there's like no ESR at all so this is what capacitors should read like here's some examples of some real bad ones super high ESR 15 ohms that is a 10 yes I can't see it. 10. That's a 1035, so same thing. That one's going bad too, huh? It's well, what, one ohm? One ohm is pretty good for a 10. But right. That's also a 10. That's a 10, so those all read one ohm. I guess you're right. What's this one? That's a hundred though, so that should be very that should be like almost nothing. One and a half, one and three quarter ohms. This is what forty seven or four seventy, I can't tell. Nothing. Gotta get through the there you go. Yeah, there you got it. So, yeah, that's tenth so of an ohm. This is really bad. Ten this is kind of bad, and that's oh, that decent. It's decent, but going. Those are the only surface mount ones that you can get to from the front. These are all niche cons. I don't expect any of these to be bad. What is that one? 22, maybe? Pretty good. Pretty decent. Half an ohm. It's about getting through the conformal coating. There you go. That's good. So it's just the surface mount ones, it so looks like. This one's really bad. So it's kind of what I expected. And then there's one underneath, but I don't think that you can get to. Actually, there's two of them underneath, and they're tiny. So this is why we diagnose. We don't just change parts. So the information on the Internet is not always the best. Uh, we determine that it is the surface mount caps, but both of these are bad. Now, as I recall, I think that the, I think that the uh, video that I found, you know, the guy just parallels a, 100 microfarad in here. Um, you can't just do that. That's not necessarily the one that's bad. And as it turns out, all three of them are bad, but the worst one is the 10 at 35. Um, so I've got the right ones on the way from DigiKey. And we're going to go ahead and change these out. They're a little bit tricky. I am putting surface mount ones back in its place just because it's the right way to do it. Um, if we need to change the ones that are under the display, we'll, we'll deal with that later. I don't want to risk ruining the display for two caps that probably aren't the issue. These are the buck boost converters right here. These have to do with the power supply filtering. So 
these are likely what's causing it not to work. But um, proper diagnosis is that the ESR, and I learned a little bit too, because obviously the person that I was uh, borrowing the, or we were using the uh, capacitor wizard with, he's a real expert in electronics. Um, you know, the, the lower the microfarad, the higher the ESR that you're going to have. So it's kind of acceptable to see like, you know, an ohm. This is 15 ohms right here. So we know that this cap is absolutely bad. And I'll try to kind of not ruin these when I take them off. And we'll try and measure them with the M tester. All right. So we got the new caps. And uh, I'm just going to check them out here real quick. We'll do the 330 at uh, 35 first. I've got the M tester here. Um, we'll just see what the new ones are versus the old ones. And I think I did notice these are the same brand. Uh, at least the symbol's the same. I think these were Panasonic. Uh, but anyways, uh, like I said, we got the M tester here. Let's see if I can get the contacts to seat. And we'll compare this. That way, when we do the old ones, I'll try and compare them. If I can just get this to sit on here. We'll uh, compare the old ones. So 322 ESR 0.1 ohms. That's great. Um, so, yeah, these new ones... These, this is good. Um, so let's check the next one. 0.4 ESR at 100 microfarads. That's about right. 1.4 ohms ESR at 11.58 microfarads. That's great. If you remember the one that's bad, uh, the uh, capacitor wizard says that it's 15 ohms, which is not acceptable. 1.4 ohms is about what we were seeing uh, on the uh, capacitor wizard. Uh, with the ones that were good on that other, uh, we were using an ECU, by the way, an old ECU that he had uh, that had some good caps on it, just as a comparison. So um, this is more for documentation purposes. Let's see what these are after I get them off. Okay, so i um, trying to get the best angle for you here. It's not great. Um, the 330, I think I'm going to try and take it off with the soldering iron because it's big enough. Um, the 10 and the 100, especially the 10, I'm probably just going to try and break it off. Um, very carefully, of course, um, but we have to be extremely careful in here just because there's so many little components around it. We don't want to overheat it. We don't, if we break them off, we don't want to break them off um, and uh, rip the board. So I'm just going to try very carefully, see if I can't heat this and get it to come up and off. But if it doesn't, I may just, uh, I may just break it. And when I say break it, I don't mean just busting it off. I mean um, <clears throat> twisting it very carefully and deliberately in a, you know, kind of rotating it to get it off. Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to do this. Remember, these are surface mount components. You know, they're not meant to be worked on like this, but we do the best that we can. Maybe if I get the one side, I can just lift very carefully. All right. We did get it off. I do still have trace here. Um, so I'd say that that's pretty successful. We'll get this cleaned up a little bit. Put a little bit of solder there. And I'll put a little bit of solder on here. Perfect. Just a tiny bit. I know it's probably kind of hard for you to see. Let me see if I can't scoot you guys in a little bit. I should have done that before. Sorry. Um, that's a little bit better, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so we did get that one off. Um, I think this 10... I also am noting, too, in case I forget, but that the negative is on um, the outside on all of these. The 10, I'm probably just going to try and see if I can't just rock it back and forth and get it off. Maybe the same with the 100 here. but I'm staying in frame here. All right. 
right, so this is the 10 at 35, and it's very carefully just wiggling it until it comes off. Probably won't be able to test this one now, but that's okay. And it did indeed come off of there. Yeah, we lost. I might still be able to test that actually. If you take a look at it, you can see it's still got uh, Still got some connector there. I might be able to do that. But now I've got access to it and I can just heat this up and take the old uh, leads off of here. 330 and the 10. I called it a 16 earlier. It's 16 volt. Excuse me, 35 volt. 35 volt, 10 microfarad. And uh, we'll do the 100 here last. Let me see if maybe I can't heat it. That one's going to be just a little bit more of a challenge to uh, to get off. Let's see if I can't get you in frame better. Yeah, that's just not going to be great, but we'll do the best that we can. Don't be afraid to do this, though. You know, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to do what everybody else does and just buy one of these on eBay. I just have been trying to avoid that is all. Got it. That one came off relatively easy, actually. You can see on the, uh, let me see if I can't get it in here. Very difficult to see, but you can see it, it tore off on one side, which is just fine. Let's take a look at this, see if we need to clean it up a little bit. Not really. It, it actually tore away from the solder, which is good. So we'll just clean that up just a little bit here. It's perfect. All right, next we'll be uh, installing the uh, new ones. All right, let's check these old caps. So it's coming out at 9,000 nanofarads, which is, uh, you know, 10 microfarads, but the ESR is 15. Let's see, is that my hand in the way? It is. ESR is uh, 15. That's going to turn off here in a second. Um, that's terrible. That's a bad capacitor is what that is. Um, way too much resistance probably what's wrong with it we'll move on here 3.2 ohms ESR and it's reading 90 microfarads so it's a little bit low it's lost some capacitance this voltage lost 3.9 percent 3.2 ohms ESR so it's not good so this was not real bad this is uh it should be it should be almost zero ohms at 330 microfarads but it's down to 311 voltage loss of 1.6 percent let's see if we can't get that and of course you can see the ESR is 0.68 ohms it uh, it's going it's going it shouldn't be that high ESR at 330 microfarads so anyways that's just a look at the uh, a comparison you can see obviously I'm almost certain that this uh, 10 at uh, 35 that's the culprit all right let's get to this we're going to start with the smallest one first, which is the 10 at 35. Have the appropriate replacements here. And especially with these small ones, I think probably the easiest thing for me to do, I've got just, you know, some tweezers um, that, I, that I use. Um, the easiest thing, I think, is, I already did this, but, you know, flow the solder on the two pads and just get a nice clean surface that's ready. And... Um, you know, this is surface mount, so you don't have a mechanical connection really holding it. Um, but I'm going to try and do this with my left hand. I'm going to try and hold this here. By the way, this is the 10, 100, and the 330. That's the order that they go in. You don't want to screw that up because uh, if you do, <laughs> you have to take them back off again. Now, I bought extras. I bought, you know, four of each because they were 80 cents a piece or whatever. So I figured in case I screwed something up, I had it, and uh, I wouldn't have to worry about ruining it. You know, I could screw up four times. If I screw up four times, then I shouldn't be doing this. So make sure your tip's good and cleaned and tinned. Um, I just cleaned the end of this because it was a little bit gummed up. 
So I'm going to start with the easier side to get to and just get it tacked in. Then it'll make it so it doesn't want to move around at all. And uh, you can already tell I don't have enough solder on here. But this is extremely difficult to do. A little bit of solder on the tip here. Extremely difficult. And I think I got one side on there. It's not going to be pretty. Let me see if we're still, yeah, we're still in frame. It's not going to be pretty, but it'll be functional, and that's what we care about. As long as it doesn't fall off or something like that, which we'll make sure that we get it on there good enough. There we go. Just super tiny stuff you're talking about here. So now that I got the other side, let me clean this side up just to skosh. There. That's good. So that actually wasn't too horrible. By the way, I've got a pair of these these things too, these uh, magnifier headset things. These are great, and if you can't see it, you know, sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. In this case, I've got a pretty good view of it. Just check it, make sure it's not loose or anything. doesn't appear to be. So we'll move on. We'll do the 100. As they get bigger, they get easier. Um, I'm going to clean this up too. I see I've got a little peak of solder on here, and I know it's probably very difficult for you to see. Scoot you in a little bit. There's just a little peak of solder here. I want to make sure that these are kind of flat to a certain extent. Actually, clean this up a little bit with the sucker. A little bit of solder where there shouldn't be. This is why you got to be really careful with this stuff. I don't think it's going through the conformal coating, but if it is, it'll create problems. There's a trace right next to it, and I just want to make sure that it's not bridging that because that'll just make it do some really weird stuff. It might not work at all. Looks like it just melted into the into the coating. It didn't go through the trace, but you can't be too careful. There. I just want to give it a nice flat spot to put that on. Patience. Just a lot of patience. This one is going to give me a run for my money, I can already tell. Let's see. Boy, this is just difficult, tiny stuff. Let me clean that off. Too much solder on there. It's hard to get this. It's very hard to get this right. It sits up too high. If you get too much solder on it to start with, then it doesn't want to sit flat, doesn't want to connect.
I might need to turn this up a little bit. Okay. A little bit of solder in the way there. You can't see that side of it, I'm sure. Yeah, it's just not going to be good. I want to touch this side up a little bit. I wish I had a smaller tip. I mean, this is a tiny tip as it is, but it's, I wish it was even smaller. All right, I think we got it. We got the 10, we got the 100. And last but not least, probably going to be, I'll eat my words if I say that. Uh, don't want to say it's going to be the easiest because probably won't be. And I'm going to need to level these out a little bit. look pretty decent pretty decent can you even see what I'm doing I attempt to make it look halfway decent and straight Does not look like that it's stuck. Let's see if I can't get to it from here. There we go. It does not. It looks like a very bad solder joint to me. Yeah, that did not take. Let's try that again. What I might do is scrape it up a little bit down there with the tweezers. All right, let's get down in there now. I scraped it up a little bit with the tweezers. Make sure the tip is very clean. There we go. I think we got it that time. All right, so I'm just gonna check these for integrity. Um, you know, my OCD is getting to me. This 10 is a little bit crooked, but you know what? That's okay. It's on there and that's what's important. Yep. I think that we're in good shape. I'm going to leave those alone. So here's the bummer about this thing is I really can't kind of like assemble it and check it. I got to put it together and just hope that it works. Um, it's, you can't really... I guess I can kind of cobble the dash together, but I mean, it's really kind of got to go back together and you got to have everything hooked up if you don't want a zillion codes coming up. Um, I anticipate that it's going to work, but you know, you never know. So I'm going to uh, clean the glass on this and uh, uh, put it back together. So I did make one mistake, which I don't know why the hell I did this. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was rushing to finish it, but I took these three screws out and I can't for the life of me figure out why the hell I did that. That was unnecessary. And so don't do that. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I probably was thinking they were holding the display unit in somehow. Um, but yeah, don't do that. They, those, it's not necessary unless you're disassembling the display from the board. All right, so let's reassemble. This goes here. And 
this does snap in here. Now, I didn't take this whole thing off of here. Um, you can. I just decided not to. Um, I'm sure I don't have any paw prints on it. And it it kind of snaps in here, and then once you snap it in, it's got a whole bunch of screws that hold it. Um, actually, before I do that, though, we need to hook up the... Uh, I believe we have to hook up the ribbon cables first. That's probably why I took those screws out. I think I pulled this off and this was still sitting in here. That's why I did that. So let's get this here. Get the ribbon cable in. You do need to make sure that these seat in there all the way and correctly. You'll know because you won't see the tabs anymore the the conductors it'll sink all the way in you got to make sure that these little things are popped out like I think I showed you when we took it apart um, you gotta make sure that these are all the way out otherwise it won't work you won't be able to get it in there and you'll be frustrated so that's perfect lock it into place Kind of go back and forth until they're both all the way down, both sides. So that looks good. Um, I think I can probably plug these in after I put this on here. You know, this just sucks because, you know, I, I probably could cobble the whole thing together. No, you do need to plug it in first. I was wrong again. Plug the uh, plugs on the sides in first. This one will go in, but the other one won't. Um, I probably could cobble this together in order to test it to make sure that it works, but it would be kind of difficult. I might just set everything in place. I probably won't put all the trim pieces on and everything until I check it to make sure that it that it functions. All right, and. Um, it's got a whole bunch of tiny screws, not that tiny, but little screws that go around it, you know. By the way, I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but if you, you know, if you're watching this for the first time, get yourself one of these little electric screwdrivers. Not a, not an impact driver or a, or a, a drill. These little electric screwdrivers. These things are really kind of wonderful for this. And you can set the torque on them. So it just stops for me. I don't have to worry about splitting anything. So you put about 10,000 of these in. We'll go all the way around this. And then there's the larger screws that are gonna go uh, hold this down and hold the plastic in. So I'll just go ahead and finish that up. So if you watch my videos, you'll know that I try not to edit out my mistakes. Um, and that's why, you know, a lot of this stuff I'm doing for the first time, I'm just a mechanically inclined person. I don't do this for a living, you know, so keep that in mind. I've said that before, but if you're watching this or you're new to the channel, um, it's important for you to know. Uh, I had taken these three screws out thinking I was going to separate this unit. I didn't need to do that. So, you know, I put them back in, but at first I was going, where did I get these screws from? Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't separate this right here. So anyways, the way that I had done it is I removed this screw here, this screw here, this one here, that kind of let this float a little bit, as well as this one right here that floated up. Then I could remove these screws here. I didn't really need to take this off, but I did get it out of my way. There's one screw underneath right here. Um, so I got that out of the way so I could get to that plug, and that really is what got this out of here. All right, so I've pretty much done the bare minimum to check this thing out, which is pretty much putting it all the way back together with the exception of those trim pieces, the glove boxes, and the, this vent over here. Um, but, you know, whatever I can save if I got to take it apart. I just hooked the battery back up. Um, let's turn it on and let's see what freaks out or what I forgot to plug in. Worst case, I'll have to change some codes. Hey, would you look at that? Of course, I flipped all the... Nope, we don't want that. And the display works. And not only does it work, it's a heck of a lot brighter than it was. Um, so that's good. Looks like, let's see, 
turns on, full on mode. I might have forgotten to hook up the uh, the bright brightness control for it. I'll have to check that out. But uh, yeah, it's working. It's actually it's a heck of a lot brighter. That means it had a power supply issue. So there you have it. Um, it was a total of eight dollars and fifty cents in capacitors, and that's I bought four times what I needed. Um, so this is absolutely something you can do yourself. It's not. Um, this isn't that hard. I know it looks like a big deal. It's really not. These things come apart pretty easily. So looks like we got it fixed. And yes, I had just forgotten to hook up the dimmer, uh, the plug in the back of the dimmer, so that works. One very last thing here too, you might've noticed the fuel gauge was showing empty. Um, the cause of that is disconnecting the battery. Uh, so there's a couple of ways to fix that. Um, well, one of them is it usually just goes away on its own after you drive it for like 10 minutes. Um, I opted to just do it the, uh, do what the internet says on that. Um, and, uh, it's all it really involves is, um, the odometer button and turning the car on and off. There's a procedure for it. So I'll just go ahead and post the, uh, I'll post the link rather than show you because it's it's kind of kludgy. Uh, so you can follow that if you need to recalibrate your gas gauge. But as you see, it's uh, showing full now.